Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited about the amazing progress that is being made to make the web so much more of an expressive place. Of course, we all want to have great tools that are going to make it easier, easier for us to take advantage of all of these latest capabilities. And since the beginning of the web, we've made it our business to make such tools. Many of you probably rely today on such tools as Photoshop, Illustrator, and Fireworks to create the core graphical assets of your web creations. And Dreamweaver, of course, has become the market-leading all-in-one web production tool. In fact, this morning, I'm pleased to let you know that we are releasing a subscription update to Dreamweaver CS6 that adds important new capabilities for HTML5 tags and integration with Adobe Edge Animate, as well as a bunch of other features. But the latest interactive capabilities of the web, the kinds of things that Kevin was showing you this morning, and the explosion of the devices that he was describing have really changed the way that you work and made a lot of complexity. It's gotten really hard now to deal with all of the intersection of these devices and these capabilities. And in many cases, you're relying upon a patchwork of tools that in many instances just have not yet caught up to your needs. The modern web needs modern tools. We've gone out over the past couple of years and spent a bunch of time talking to many of you to try to understand where your pain points are and what would make things fun and easy again to develop on the web. Today is a key milestone in that collaboration that we've begun with you, and I am incredibly excited and proud to introduce to you Adobe Edge Tools and Services. We've started fresh in developing these new tools and services and have really taken a new approach to our own development. We've built them from the ground up, and we've worked hard to make it so that they are really enjoyable and fun to use and easy to use in creating expressive content and applications that really leverage all of the latest capabilities and the reach of the modern web. In fact, some of these tools and services are themselves built entirely on web technologies. As we set out to build these tools and services, we thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be great if we had a set of tools that were optimized to create mobile-ready content for the web and for applications? And wouldn't it be great if we did them in a way where each tool was focused on an individual task so that each tool would work well individually, but these tools could also work really well together, and importantly, they could be mixed and matched with other third-party tools and services that may not be from Adobe. And we also thought it would be critical as we design these tools to make sure that they improved productivity, but did so in a way that did not hide the underlying code of the web technologies being used. So let's take a look at what we've done. A number of you may be familiar with the project that paved the way for us, Adobe Edge Animate. Edge Animate began about two years ago as an experiment in standards-based animation. We wanted to see what we could do to make it easy and more accessible for designers to take advantage of these latest motion and animation capabilities that had come onto the web. Edge Animate became a great example of the new release early and often approach that we've taken in developing all of these tools and services. We've gone through many public previews over the past year and we've received a wealth of feedback from all of you in the community that has been instrumental in shaping our development of this tool. So what is Edge Animate? It's a tool for creating rich, interactive, animated content using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it delivers animations that provide a consistent experience across all modern browsers. It offers you the ability to do very precise authoring on a visual timeline that follows in the footsteps of world-class timeline-based tools like After Effects and Flash Pro. And yet, it also offers you very fine-grained control with a panel that allows you to go in and directly edit the JavaScript. Let me show you an example of what you can do. There's a really talented designer down in Los Angeles, a guy named Patrick Williams who uh, does a bunch of great freelance work. And he used a number of the preview releases that we've had out of Edge Animate to create this portfolio site that shows, um, shows off his work and, and what he's done. And you can see that he used this really beautiful, immersive set of capabilities to create a really rich, creative, and beautiful site 
that lets you see his work. You can apply filters here to say you want to see only his logos or you want to see what he does in print uh, or on the web. And then you can click in and go and see the work. So again, giving him the ability to really express himself, express his own creativity, and create something really beautiful and more immersive than what has traditionally been possible um, in a standard web browser. But you're probably wondering, how do you actually do that in the tool? How do you create a site like this? So to help us out this morning, I'd like to bring out Adobe's creative evangelist, Paul Tranny, who's going to stay with me during the morning, use all of the Edge tools and services to build out a real web project, starting with Edge Animate. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Danny. It's good to be here. Hello, sir. Yeah. All right, yeah. What are you going to build for us? I would love to show you. Uh, I have a project going on right now. If we just take a look. And uh, really what I'm going to be building is a project around uh, 40 years of technology and trends. Okay? Okay. So it's going to be multifaceted. It's going to work across screens. I want to have a responsive site. I'm also going to be making an app later. Great. So I'm starting off here in Edge Animate. You can see I have it open. In fact, I have an HTML file open in Edge Animate. So I can literally open up that HTML and start working with it. It's just a regular content. HTML file. You just open it right up. Exactly. Great. So, yep. And that's what I have here. So I can position elements all I want. In fact, if I just select this Polaroid camera, if you'll notice off to the side, look, I can, have, I can make this responsive and make it uh, more fluid by changing it to from an exact pixel base to a percentage base. So that will change. You get some base. scalability in what yeah, you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So that's going to work out really well as we get even down to these smaller screens. Nice. So I'm just flipping that switch there, and I can start to animate this content. So I'm going to start with this content actually down here uh, in this wheel. So in order to animate it, all I need to do is move that object right down here. At this point in my timeline, if you notice, you can see those keyframes appear. So as I move these objects, it generates these keyframes. Okay, so this is huge being able to do this. Rather than writing lines of code, it actually generates that for me. And how do you get them to go up? What do you have to do? All I need to do is scrub down in the timeline, say about a second in, and then move them to that new location. Move them out. Oh, I just see. Like and they're that. in the timeline. You can yeah. see it's actually adding the information for you. Start to see it build. Yep. In fact, for this, for this uh, Polaroid, I can actually, maybe it starts out kind of rotated, but I can manipulate any of these properties in my properties panel and have it animate into Look at that. Nice. place. Yep. So sliding in, maybe readjusting that however I want. You can see it generates all that content. Nice. So um, I'll just click play. You can see that content slide out. And, and I have more. some other content yeah, nice. in there as well. And uh, I do want to show you that, but I want to do one more thing. Because this is a pretty straightforward animation as that slides out. It's a, a linear easing is what's going on. And I'd like to add more finesse to it. So I can add oh, I these see. algorithms, such as maybe um, an ease out. In this case, I'll add I a see. Bat. So that's going to give it like a little bit of a bounce? Or? Yeah, a slight yeah. bounce, but mm -hmm. just gives it a little more character. And I love just having this control. Uh, with this animation, I'll just click play. You can see that play nice. through. You can see that other content flow out as well. Great. So I can do that with my content. I want to go beyond animation because yep. I also want to add some interactivity to these elements. But can you actually take one of those symbols and make it come to life? Yeah. Yeah, I can jump right in here. Um, it doesn't have to be a symbol. It could be any item. But really, okay. it's just a matter of selecting it. Yeah. And you'll notice. I have oh, I the see. ability yeah. to add any sort of function I want. So I can say, you know what, on click, on rollover. We even have touch events in here. I'm just going to start with a click. And you jump in here. And so this then is you'd now write, a, Java, a JavaScript panel. Yeah, so you'd write, and maybe, I, I don't know, maybe some of you would write, I don't know what you'd write in here. <laughs> you'd write something if you don't know JavaScript. Nonetheless, what you could do is you could use these code snippets off to the side. And this is a great place to start. So you can either write your own JavaScript, or you can use these pre-built snippets, yeah, depending you got on your it. level of ability. And there's even some error handling. Great. You are writing your own or even modifying what's there. All right, so with that in place, I'll just run it. And again, I'm just running this content in a browser. It's an HTML page that I was just working on. You can see that content animates out. Nice. I can click, oh, and, you and then it generates. Picture. A photo oh, of Oh, look Danny. at that, like that, Paul. Do I still have a Pulling job? surprises on me All right. from my olden days, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, helped me out a ton with this project. Beautiful. And you'll be seeing more of it as well. So. Great. Thanks, Paul. Cool. Beautiful.
So you can see how Edge Animate allows you to create rich, interactive, and animated content using the visual timeline that Paul just showed you, and how it also incorporates that JavaScript panel so that if you're comfortable with JavaScript, you can go in there and edit directly or use those pre-built-in code snippets. So after more than two years, seven preview releases, and more than half a million downloads, it gives me great pleasure and pride to introduce to you this morning the release of Adobe Edge Animate 1.0. This is a new world-class tool, and we can't wait to see what you're going to build with it. We're introducing Edge Animate with flexible pricing options, including the ability to get a perpetual license for $499, you can subscribe to the product standalone for $14.99. And of course, we've included it as part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. But hold your tweets for a second. <laughs> Thank you. As I mentioned, you guys have been instrumental in helping us to create this tool through this partnership that we've begun during the preview development of this tool. And we really appreciate all of this help. So it gives me also great pleasure to let you know that we are introducing Edge Animate with an introductory price of free. <laughs> we'll have details at the end of the keynote on how you can get your free copy. But we want everybody, whether you're here on the stream or anywhere in the world, go get your free copy of Edge Animate. Give it a try. Go do some amazing work and show us what it is that you can create. 